Good evening and welcome to Tucker Carlson tonight. It's been nearly four weeks since Stephen Paddock committed the deadliest shooting in modern American history. Tonight we have brand new exclusive information from a government source given to us just hours ago, and it's remarkable. The Las Vegas security guard, the only eyewitness to this shooting, left this country shortly after it took place. We'll tell you where he went and what it may mean in just a minute. But first, the law of unintended consequences remains in force in Washington tonight. An investigation designed to uncover Republican collusion with a foreign power has unearthed just the opposite. We now know that the most powerful Democratic lobbying firm in Washington was at the very center of Russian efforts to shape American politics and policy. The Podesta Group, founded by Hillary Clinton's campaign chairman and his brother, took money from Russian interests to influence the Obama administration and Hillary Clinton's State Department. It turns out there were indeed Russian agents in Washington. They were working with Democrats. Meanwhile, we have also solved much of the mystery around the infamous Trump dossier, that collection of salacious and in many cases totally made up allegations that BuzzFeed credulously ran earlier this year as a news story. The dossier was assembled by a former British intelligence agent called Chris Steele. Steele was originally paid by a still anonymous Republican donor who was hoping to undermine the Trump campaign during the primaries. We've known that for a while. But what we've just learned and what has turned this story and Washington itself on its head is that once the Republican primaries finished, the Trump dossier project was funded by Hillary Clinton's own presidential campaign and also by the DNC. Democrats have been lying about that explicitly for more than a year, but it's true, it turns out. Hillary's former spokesman conceded on television tonight that Hillary herself may have known about it because, of course, she did. More shocking, though, the FBI apparently may have also paid Chris Steele to dig up dirt on Trump. How did they do this? Why did they do this? We still don't know because so far the FBI has ignored subpoenas sent to them two months ago by House Intelligence Committee Chairman Devin Nunes. We'll be talking to him later in the show. All of this raises some serious questions. First and most important, is it even legal? There are a number of federal laws that prohibit politicians from paying foreign nationals for campaign work, yet Hillary Clinton and the Democratic National Committee apparently paid Chris Steele for that dossier. Isn't that against the law? Presumably, we'll find out fairly soon. Next, why was the FBI involved in this in the way that it was? The agency has 35,000 employees. It's got unmatched resources and expertise. It's the FBI. Why would it even consider going to a private investigator to do research on a president-elect? Keep in mind, this isn't the first time the FBI has outsourced a major investigation. Recall that federal agents never actually examined the DNC servers after they were supposedly hacked by an outside party during the campaign. Instead, the FBI relied on the work of a DNC contractor called CrowdStrike, which assured them and the rest of us that Russia was behind that hacking. But wait, why would the FBI do that? Did anyone at the Justice Department consider that hiring third-party actors with unclear motives to conduct a high-profile investigation might be an excellent way for, say, foreign intelligence operations to sow chaos and promote their agendas? At the very least, wouldn't CrowdStrike's claims be colored by their natural desire to make their employer, the Democratic Party, happy? It's nuts. And by the way, by working so closely with a group conducting partisan research for a partisan political campaign, didn't the FBI compromise its political independence, its all-important political independence? Another thing, to conduct research for the dossier, Chris Steele had extensive contact, of course he did, with Russian sources, some of them connected to the Kremlin directly. So if the Clinton campaign was paying for Steele's research, why weren't they, in effect, colluding with Russia? Irony of ironies. And maybe most important of all, why is the FBI refusing to answer basic questions from Congress? Our government is not supposed to work like that. The FBI is not its own country. It's not a private organization. It isn't elected by voters. It has no inherent legitimacy except to the extent it obeys the laws that citizens, you and me, voted for. The FBI can't decide to ignore the Congress of the United States. That's obstruction. It's also scary. If federal agents with guns aren't accountable to the Congress or to the president they work for, who are they accountable to? Who's really in charge? Suddenly, you're looking at something resembling an occupying army and not a legitimate federal agency. And that's when things start to fall apart.